fingerprint or what have you. It's not going to prove this dude walked on water, turned water into wine, raised the dead and healed the sick and all this stuff. It's not going to prove none of that shit. None of this stuff, none of these names they find on anything is going to prove any of the validity of the Bible because it's just a name that somebody found on something that predates any biblical text that we have. So obviously this stuff, these names existed before biblical text that we had. And you can't put the two together because you can just obviously say, well, this person probably existed and was known about, and they just put them in a the book. Where is the connection from Jesus walking on water to a name of Jesus? That's not even going to say Jesus because there was no J's. So, you know, translations, issues with translations as well. And a story passed down verbally always get changed a little bit here and there until the story is completely different by the time it gets to somebody who matters, you know, ear. And that's the thing. So, you know, of course, the practice of writing stuff down the way it's supposed to be and then, you know, passing it down had to be done because it's like, well, the story is completely different by the time it got to be from A. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's people who are already know about, of course. Uh, so a lot of people, they always send me information. A lot of Christians send me information on apologetics, uh, Christian apologetics, and um, to consider their research and consider what they're pointing out. And it's just, it's a big pile of shit that people are stepping in instead of stepping over. And it's like y'all tap dancing in it for no reason. Just step over the shit. And the information is bullshit. It's it's, what are you talking about? Why would you even deal with any of this information that you can clearly step over and keep it moving? Because it's bullshit. Nothing that they put out there is going to prove that. And it's like, you know, where is it in people's mind? And they can't understand that any type of uh, pottery or rock or name is not going to prove anything, no matter what anybody said. Then you start going back to the scientists and researchers who's putting out the information it has, as it has always been, they're Romans. It's, you know, of course the Rome, Rome going to put stuff out or they were already Christians. And these, these are people who are in a field that is a Christian field and they're putting out the information and then we're just accepting it. And it's, it's nothing to really back up what's being said. There's no proof. It's a big pile of shit. That's what I always say is pile of shit. It's not real. Like what, what, what is, what's wrong with y'all? So yeah, please stop sending me emails on apolo apologetics and uh, these guys and is just pay attention to what they're saying. It's, it's crazy. This guy literally sat there and told a bunch of people that truth is, you know, your truth. So the whole argument was that your truth is not my truth. And when people say that, I look at them like they're crazy. And they, it, people be thinking they'd be saying some profound, smart shit, but it'd be stupid as hell when you really analyze it. My truth is not your truth. I, I, I can understand that, but you can't use the word truth. You can say, well, what you think is not what I think. You can't say truth because truth is truth. You can't say your truth because truth is truth. You know, if it's not, then it is. You understand? So either it is or it isn't. And then that's it. That's what truth is. There is no in between, go between, maybe so, or what have you. Truth is that's it, period, point blank. There is no way around that. There, there is no yes and no. It's either yes or no. That's truth. You can't say my truth is not your truth. Either it is or it isn't. It's just that simple. So it's all about the truth, the facts. So this guy sat here and uh, uh, he made a reference to, have you ever talked to someone who's not on a truth quest? You know, and that, yo, know, everybody loves Jesus. I mean, everybody likes Superman. Everybody likes Spider-Man. Doesn't mean that they're real, you know? And one of the main things that apologetics does is they throw out so many, it's semantics to the fullest, to be honest but they throw out so many hypotheticals. And that's what a lot of the lectures be centered around. So as I told a couple of you guys, you know, you gotta, you gotta look for the hypotheticals because a lot of the information is hypothetical. Hypothetically speaking, uh, yeah, if they didn't create the Bible, we'll still have all this evidence on Jesus. And he's, he can't fathom that. No, we wouldn't because the shit was made up to support the Bible because we didn't have it, you know, during the time it's supposed to have happened. 
when stuff happened, you get the information. There's no point 40 years later writing about it. For what? And you can't prove none of it. And the story sounds far fetched. So it's like I said before, you know, God come to you, says he's a Christian. God gave him a message. He told him to tell you to give me all your worldly possessions, all your money, everything. Give me all of it. Strip down, put on his robe that's not made of cotton and go out into the wilderness and walk until you find God. Go seek him out in the wilderness. Who would do it? These Christians who say they believe what they do it. It sounds far fetched. You can throw in a story about a burning bush and a talking donkey and snake. You can throw all that into the mix and then have a person come to you with this information. Would you accept it? Hell no. And these Christians know damn well they wouldn't accept it. So you got to go back then and think about it. Like, how would people accept this in the masses? And it's one of the things, it's, it's the biggest con because you have to put so much into it. So when you build churches and it's like, why would they build this building? Why would these people act like this? Why would it be all these people in on this if it's not real? Let me get get in line. And, you know, we've seen these ex experiments where people do a whole, you know, bring a new person into the room and see if they follow what everybody else is doing in the room. You know, remember the one video when a lady kept walking into the room and she just didn't know what was going on. She thought she was there for a job interview, I believe. And at a certain time, the people would stand up. And they did something and she would stand up and she started to follow what they was doing. Like, okay, let me just do what they're doing. And that's, that's how it is. Monkey see, monkey do. People going to follow what is out there. And that's how the Bible is. You know, we always raised in church and we're looking at these grown ups do what they was doing. We followed it, you know, and the message is always good and it's uplifting, but we don't ever read the book because we've been taught the book. And then as soon as you start reading the Bible, it's like, oh, hell no, this is not what I thought it was. And that's the thing. And these people are basing their lives and their religion off of a sermon, off of something that appealed to them, that touched them, that they believe uh, embodies what Christianity is about because they didn't read the damn book. And if you read the book, there's no way you're going to have that type of emotion from it. So people want us to take into consideration. Christians want us to take into consideration that if the Bible is made up bullshit, then where do we come from? Who created us? And it's as if they're saying no other religion or people talk about the creation or had a creation story before the Bible. There's a bunch of civilizations that had creation stories before the Bible. Why don't you go to them? And it's because they already have accepted in their minds what Christianity has shot down. And that is what we call paganism, which is basically what people practice before uh, organized religion. And it's just anybody who doesn't believe what the people in power believe. They call them pagan. And it's them studying nature and spirituality. And this is what was going on before organized religion. So how come we can't go back to that and say, well, what did they say we came from? There's a whole bunch of civilizations that we can prove existed because we can't prove these Hebrews did, you know, before biblical times. And they have stories of creation stories. And we got to go back and look. I mean, just ancient Greece and in, in, in Egypt, you know, just easy examples, which they talk about in the Bible uh, as far as these people existing. But we can go back and look at this, even though it's put in a mythological form. So that is my point when I talk to you guys to say this is what you need to go back and look at. What is it about the information being put in allegorical stories and as mythologies that we need to really dig into and figure out what it's about? Because it's not given to us straight up for a reason. And I elaborated on that in uh, previous videos. And it's like, what is it that it's like we're kids? Why is these stories being told to us like this instead of just telling me straight up the truth, you know, and. It's crazy. It's like, you know, I really need to know what's going on because it's supposed to be so important, but it's, it's it has to be given given to us in a dualistic way so we can make a choice that that's basically going to affect, you know, how we live our lives. And that's how religion is put to us. And that's how this information is put to us. And what you're supposed to do is go on, you know, a quest, a journey on your own to really research and study this information and figure out what what's what it's all about it's really the most important thing that you should be doing but we're not because the system is a part of that choice and the system is so distracting and life is so distracting to take you away from those things and then people just think christians think going to church is you know what they need to do to fulfill that part 
where the rest of us, conscious people, we feel like, no, we need to go and look. So my suggestion would be for a lot of the Christians and you guys who follow these apologetics and these people who come out and putting out all this information about the so-called evidence, it can be very convincing because what you're looking at, what you're watching was designed to be convincing. It's just that simple. Your whole point in watching this is to hear somebody convince you of this information and you want to be convinced. And then you have somebody who comes and examines this information more critically that's going to tell you, well, this is a pile of shit. What are you doing? Like he's he's just saying stuff. Where's the proof? So these people come out and just give you, oh, oh, well, they found this in this cave and it had such and such name on it. Okay. And how does how does that prove anything? It, it, it was it's older than the Bible. It's older than any proven book. So how does that how how is that prove anything? It doesn't prove anything. Then you have to look at the criticism about these so-called artifacts where you have scholars that saying it's bogus. We can't prove this shit. It's bullshit. You have other scholars who saying, well, this is not what it's saying. And people who is coming out and saying, well, these are forgeries. These are antiquities forgeries. And it's so much out there. There's nothing concrete. And that is the bottom line point. If it's not true, then it's not true. Now, I'm not going to say if it can't be proven, it's not true. But there's something that's called common fucking sense. And common fucking sense to tell you that a snake can't talk and a donkey can't talk. That Elisha, he don't, he don't have superhuman powers where he's raising the dead. Jesus, he can't walk on no damn water. Man can't survive three days in a big fish. It just don't make no sense for penguins to come from the poles and somehow get to freaking, you know, the Middle East to board an ark that a 500 year old man built in a hundred years. Like, come on. So then we have the apologetics and the Christians who want to go into the allegorical part. Cause this is one of the arguments I have. Well, how come you guys can accept the allegorical stories of ancient Egyptian mythology, but we can't accept the allegorical stories of Christianity, but Christianity is not taught to us as being allegorical. They taught us Christianity as this being fact. So if that's allegorical, then what else could be allegorical? So you mean to tell me that the story of Jesus dying for our sins could be an allegory or it could be a parable? So it didn't happen, but it's just trying to tell us some information about something else. Hmm. This is the basis of our religion. Why we go to church, you praise this man for dying for our sins and we're supposed to give all praises to him, but it could be an allegorical story. So you have these people who come out and saying, well, wait a minute, we're, we, we have allegories in here and it doesn't mean that. I don't, I don't mean specifically. It doesn't mean specifically that a snake talked or a donkey talked or that Jesus walked on water. It's, it's, it's allegorical. It's, it's basically the same thing we saying, you know? Yeah. The sun is God. The sun walks on water. The sun turns water into wine. We understand the process of it raining on the grape vines and then using the, grape, the grapes to make wine. It's, it's common sense shit to us, you know, but you can't use that argument and then say, but it's real. It's allegorical, but Jesus existed. And that's the thing. You have to sit back and accept what can be proven and, um, you know, go off that. And, and what I tell people is, hey, you choose to believe and accept this as a grown man or woman, these stories as being real and true, that's on you. But when you come and you step up and you try to, you know, talk down to us or to say that this is fact, that it actually happened, then, you know, we are inclined to come and, you know, saying, well, no, it, it didn't happen or prove it happened and you can't. And that's the whole thing. So what I always say, Jesus fake, bro. He fake. And, He's fake to a point to where it's sad to see grown ass men and women get them tattooed on their bodies, you know, and actually believe in this stuff to where the stuff is that's put out there about his life and what he did is clearly impossible. And people who seemingly have common sense and believe in real shit to be walking around crying and hooping and hollering and everything, saying they believe in this man, when they know damn well they don't, and they don't follow the religion that he supposedly died for, or you know, the rules or commandments he supposedly died for, what have you, that we can do these things and sin and so on and so forth. Y'all don't follow it. Y'all don't really honor it and 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 give, you know, real thanks for the religion. You're just scared of what you don't know. You're just afraid of the unknown. You're scared of life and you're acting. 
And the thing is, if you actually believe that this man exists, you should know he supposedly can see all things and he know you bullshitting. So it's being real with yourself. Forget all the apologetics and these people who are coming up with this theology and this information trying to prove the theology of the Bible, what have you. Forget it. At the end of the day, you're not going to follow it. You don't follow it no matter what they put out. So it just comes down to uh, you looking in, in the mirror and being real with yourself and deciding, am I going to keep this charade up and keep following this bullshit? Am I going to do actual real research and come to a truth? And when you do that, you'll be free. So yeah, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. And uh, please make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe for Worker Bug Academy Pro. Um, new video, as I said, on Worker Bug Academy. It's the only way you're going to be able to see that video is if you're a Never Pay Again member or you are uh, you have pro access. So $7.99 a month for that or pay for Never Pay Again membership. So we need this so we can get what we need to keep this stuff going. $7.99, you know, appreciate it. And um, yeah, see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.